All right, coming up today, Brian Crabtree with the HouseDog.com Real Estate Show talking about the Charleston Tri-County market. Today, how many days does your home stay on the market before you start losing money when you go to sell it? Plus, a deep dive into Charleston, Mount Pleasant, and Somerville Real Estate, three completely different markets within a 20-mile radius. We'll give you the latest numbers. You don't want to miss these. They're coming up. Plus, should you sell your home now or wait for the real settlement this summer. One example of some of the absurd headlines and topics coming out of this National Association of Realtors Settlement. I'll tell you what it means to you as a home seller and a home buyer. The latest on that as we start our week. Let's dive into the details. Um, first, let's go to the stats. Let's let's do stats. Um, uh, Somerville. Let's 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 pick up Somerville. Um, so here's what we have is the latest in Somerville, number of listings just under 1,000. Listing prices, the uh, average, uh, I guess you would say, um, uh, median list price, which is not really average. Average is a little different. I, I like average better, but median is how the realtor MLSs report this stuff out. So the median list price in Somerville is just under $420,000, if you see right up here. Uh, the new median list price coming down just a little bit. There's a lot of new construction working with a buyer this week, and there's, a, in my opinion, a plethora of options up to about $450,000, uh, really even below $400,000 in the Somerville market from Ravenel, Somerville in uh, Homecoming all the way out to Cane Bay and Nexton. There's a, a pretty good number of options, and that's keeping real estate prices uh, suppressed a little bit in the Somerville area. Not not saying it's going down, not saying it's bad, it's just keeping them suppressed, and it's making it harder to sell similar resale homes. You have to have a strong marketing plan in Somerville to sell a similar to new construction resale home. The absorption rate still, though, in Somerville, looking at this graph right here where the arrow is, 2.4 months. That is absolutely ex exceptional. Even with all the new construction on the market in the Somerville uh, Multiple Listing Service, and the sales prices are trending at about a normal pace of 97.5%. Days on the market in Somerville, almost two months. The price volume, $400 million. This is going to get a little interesting as we go into Mount Pleasant. So uh, I had some stats I thought I had up here, but uh, I don't know what happened to them. Um, you know, computers. It's been a Monday on computers here. Let's go on into Mount Pleasant stats anyway. Let's look at this. The number of listings in Mount Pleasant, the entire market, 110,000, roughly 110,000 residents. There's just over 200 listings on the market. New listings in February which is our latest fully measured month. There was about 200 new listings. Listing prices, let me, let me drop this slide here. This is the mind-boggling number if you look at the difference between what's happening in Somerville, there's lots of inventory. It's a, a, a seller's market, slightly seller's market. It's a good market. It's a strong market. Mount Pleasant, median sold price. Wow. $1,087,500. Now, I want you to look at the four-letter word. Not an expletive, but a four-letter word, sold price. That's not list price. And that is up since February 2023 in Mount Pleasant, 14 and a half percent. So when you look at the Charleston Tri-County market and you look at this graph, this this small chart right here based on home sales in the last 12 months in both sections of Mount Pleasant, north of 41, south of 41, you take a market that has a large volume that is significantly impacting what Charleston looks like on paper. Charleston looks a whole lot more expensive if you look at the Tri-County market factoring in Mount Pleasant. You take Mount Pleasant out, the prices don't look so out of line. So the north half of our market is reasonably normal for the south. The bottom half of the market, including Charleston, the city, is outrageous. And Mount Pleasant is exceptionally outrageous in terms of price. I don't know how long this can last, but I said that two years ago. The, the amount of 
of supply and demand economics going on in Mount Pleasant, the lack of new construction, the lack of available property, the lack of getting a permit, which speaks to some extent to the policies of Mount Pleasant. That's the unhealthy part of it all. But the demand in Mount Pleasant cannot be ignored. Let's look at the uh, deep dive of the numbers in the Mount Pleasant stats here. Um, So we said 200 listings in... um, uh, February, there's about that many now. List prices are climbing, unlike in Somerville, where there's a lot of new construction. You can see the contrast between Somerville and Mount Pleasant. When there's a lot of new construction, the list prices kind of edge down to get competitive. In Mount Pleasant, lack of new construction, the list prices are edging up. Absorption rate in months, there's 1.4 months of inventory in Mount Pleasant. That's a pretty anemic number, meaning the market is incredibly strong. The sold-to-list ratio is about 98 and then some change percentage. That number is very misleading no matter where you look at that in the market because you you have in a market like this where I've started doing this thing on my Facebook page kind of as a joke. It's the Brian Crabtree not deal of the week. And I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. I'm just looking at some of the prices like three bedrooms, two baths, four bedrooms, two baths, 2,300 square feet, 1.9 million. And my joke is... Where's the water frontage? There isn't any. So there's a lot of things going on in Mount Pleasant that are, uh, that are interesting in terms of market data. that You just can't rely on the top-line data. So the list prices are higher than the sales prices because a lot of people are really stretching their legs in what they're trying to get. And some of them are getting it, but many of them are not. So that keeps the list-to-sales ratio with a little bit of gap. The price volume per month, so last month in Mount Pleasant, over $300 million in homes were sold. And the days on the market, a very interesting number, about 29 days on the market is the average time it takes to sell a house. Now let's take a quick look at a Charleston graphic. Um, This graphic is comparing... January and February, this is the city of Charleston, which would include Daniel Island, West Ashley, downtown Charleston, and and such. So 189 homes sold in January, 207 homes sold in February, up 9.5%. 132 homes sold under asking price, uh, 41 sold at asking full price, and 34 over asking. This is pretty, pretty solid. Um, what we're seeing in Charleston is that there's a little more new construction. You go out of Highway 61, out the Bees Ferry Corridor, out in that area, there's some, there's some actual building going on in, in, I wouldn't say affordable neighborhoods. That's starting to be kind of a, a joke, uh, a joke in terms of Charleston County, affordable housing, uh, affordable housing in Charleston County is about half a million bucks. It seems like I say that jokingly with no stats behind it. And so when you look at that particular dynamic, there's still a better balance of or a favorable balance of demand in Charleston over supply. When you see a market that is anemic or that's struggling, you would see the numbers of people. And again, if we look back at Charleston, you would see the numbers of people asking, uh, offering in this kind of sales data, 207 homes. You might see a couple selling over asking, uh, a handful selling at asking, everything else would be under. So it's pretty healthy in Charleston County. Those are pretty good numbers. So when you look at this market as a whole, the entire market of Charleston, now you start to factor in the, the anomaly of Mount Pleasant, uh, one of the most insane Supply and demand imbalances that we could probably identify in the entire southeastern United States. There's probably none that do more than rival it, maybe a couple that barely edge it out. But Mount Pleasant is sort of an outlier to Charleston. The Charleston market overall, couple, three months of inventory. If you look at the actual day's uh, absorption rate, 2.4. Normal is five or six months. So we need double, roughly double two and a half times the inventory we have in the market right now, which is setting as of today at about uh, 3,200 listings. List prices have come down some. Sold to list ratio had come down with the highest of the interest rates as rates have gotten more stable or eased back some in the last, uh, uh, in the early part of February. Now they've eased back to drive this number forward. Uh, we're looking at about 96.9% in the whole market. So there has been Over the winter, some negotiation of prices. It goes to my theory, the best time to buy a house, if you can, is in the winter. Now, here's the problem with that. 
if you wait on that theory from right now until the winter, prices are going to go up this summer, and so the prices won't be any cheaper this winter. I'm just saying if you find yourself thinking, hey, it's October, it's time to upgrade, downgrade, buy, sell, whatever, that's the best time to actually start doing it. If that's the right timing for you, if the right timing is now, now's the time because the, the market is clearly inclining. And so waiting doesn't save you any money, but doing it sooner than the next spring, when you're sitting there looking at that decision during the holidays, actually it's inconvenient. And so a lot of people put it off till spring, but they lose the opportunity to negotiate a little more, which if you see from August of last year, we we're at 98% in the market. If you look where the mouse is on the screen, now we're down below 97. At one point we hit 96%. Days on the market, about 48 for Charleston tri-county multiple listing service in the month of february this market produced over two and a half billion that's with the b word billion dollars in sales that's massive for a market this size and population normally you have to get to a couple million residents in a tri-county area to see that kind of volume uh, I, I don't know the number in Atlanta, which is about six or seven times larger by population as Charleston, but it's only about three or four times larger in volume. So this is a high volume residential real estate market. So list prices are coming down a little bit. That's because last summer we shot them way up. The overall market, price volume, absorption rate, sold to list ratio. I mean, these numbers are all incredibly healthy. If someone goes, how's the market in Charleston? No matter where you pinpoint that on a map, as a whole, it's great. Mount Pleasant is off the charts exceptional. Somerville is good to great. Uh, Charleston itself, Charleston proper, is pretty much great. The market in Charleston is great. If you own a home, an investment property, piece of land right now, you're making money in equity. The question is, will that continue? And this is a chart I put up last week on my show or one of my videos. This is from Keeping Current Matters, a top uh, uh, news outlet and uh, research company in the real estate business. They say over the next five years, on the average home, which today is $400,000 in America, you could expect appreciation over that time of $83,000. So about 15 to 20% appreciation predicted in the housing market at large nationwide over the next 20 years. If that holds true, it's reasonable to think that, uh, that in our market of Charleston, it will outperform that because demand and is higher than the supply and the infrastructure than we can deliver. I want to get to, do I have this headline here? Um, let me see if I have this headline uh, from the CNN. Yeah, here it is. CNN Realtor Settlement. Here's a question. This might be the most absurd, ridiculous, outrageous, pathetic, incompetent, low IQ, fake stream media headline I've seen yet about the $418 million realtor settlement. Should you sell your home now or wait for the realtor settlement this summer? <laughs> That's CNN. Whoa. Um, and then I could go into pages of diatribe here written by CNN. Uh, the case for waiting until the summer. Let's look at CNN's case for waiting until the summer. The settlement could present a major, oops, the biggest advantage of waiting to list your home until the settlement is finalized is being able to negotiate an agent's commission down more than they otherwise would have been able to. On top of that, they may be able to avoid having to pay the buyer's agent's commission. And that's just false. That's just absurdly fake stream media false, right? So I'm already marketing in my text messaging, email packages these videos two percent commission two one two i don't get behind the philosophy of that some agents people i know brokers why are you doing that right it's like why am i doing that because that's what i want to do that's uh it's not that i'm devaluing my services i'm not overvaluing my services i'm assigning a value when the average home in mount pleasant is a million dollars i'm happy to make 20 grand to sell the house when the average home is in Somerville for four or five hundred thousand, I'm happy to make eight or ten thousand in this market to sell a house. Let's be honest. We all in this industry, if we're really good at it, and I think I am, we all want listings. We want to make it attractive for sellers to list their home while we need listings. 
It was always said, the best advice you can ever get in real estate is buy when the market needs buyers and sell when the market needs sellers. So if you're sitting on a house right now in Mount Pleasant, in an average neighborhood that used to be all day long $250,000 and your home is worth $600,000. I mean, the Zestimate on your house is five seventy, dollars And you think, I, six hundred dollars that probably rings my bell, I'll sell it. List it for more. If you're in Somerville, in the same situation, and you're competing with houses down the street by D.R. Horton, Dr. Horton, as I call them, or Lennar, and you want to sell your home for what they're selling homes for, not likely to work. There's reasons that could work. Let's say that there's no inventory available to close in the next 90 days by Lennar or or D.R. Horton in a neighborhood. Then certainly you could sell right now because you have an inventory unit that's available to be delivered so you could get more money for your house or at least as much as the builder is selling because someone wants to get in, get closed, be settled for the summer, go on vacation. So there's lots of factors. This is why you need an agent like me who can look at the market and say, in your little subdivision, your big subdivision, this is what's happening right now. This is how the behavior of buyers is going to play out. And this is what we should do, right? And that's free. That advice is free because I want the opportunity to be the person you would list with if you do. So what I'm not going to do, what a good agent doesn't do, is tell you what you want to hear and put a sign in the yard just to get a listing. That doesn't make any sense. A, a listing unsold by a person like me says, Brian can't sell a house. So I don't want a listing I can't sell. But in different segments of the market, as a seller, your behavior is different. So the question really isn't, should I wait CNN for your <laughs> For the what? What the hell difference does it make if the commission is two, six, ten, three, or five? What kind of question is that? Now, to their lack of credit, to their credit, they put the case for getting in on spring home buying season. CNN News. The settlement could present a major downside to home buyers under the current system. The buyer's agent commissions baked in to the total. What does that matter for a seller? I, I don't understand. This is the problem with this, this realtor settlement. Nothing, you know, I've thought about this. I've covered this too. Maybe I'm part of the problem. So let me say something that I haven't said about it. Nothing's going to change in the next six months. There's still going to be listings. There's still going to be realtors, by and large, trying to get a 5 or 6% fee. Uh, I'm, tr I'm offering two. I'm giving sellers the option. Now, if I sit down with a seller and say 2% is the fee, they go, well, what about the buyer's agent? Is that going to harm the sale of our home? If I have a $900,000 listing in Mount Pleasant competing with nothing, you're hiring me to market your home to expose it to the most buyers possible and there's no doubt done correctly in Mount Pleasant at 900000 right now, which is below the average sales price. Let's remind you of the graph. The Mount Pleasant market median sales price, $1,087,000. Like, wow, that's unbelievable. You're at nine hundred grand, so you're below median. There's virtually nothing for sale. You pay me 2%, I'm going to sell it. It's going to happen. Doesn't matter what we offer the buyer's agent. Buyer's agent, you're saving money, right? It doesn't matter if it's today or if I'm still offering this commission plan nine months from now. I don't know how long I'll do it this way, but for right now, this is my gauge on the market. Now, if you're selling in a DR Horton neighborhood in Somerville, and I come up there and I offer you 2% commission and there are 14 homes for sale just like yours at the exact same price, then yeah, we're probably want we're going to want to incentivize real estate agents to push your home to their buyer because my marketing will get them through your door. There's no doubt about that. Uh, my marketing will get. I, I don't need MLS even. I, I'm going to use it, but I don't need it. My marketing will get them through your door. The question becomes is what do they hear on the other side of getting through your door? That's not going to change anytime soon. It may never change. It may never change that most people recognize they need a buyer's agent to help them sort through the complicated mess that's real. I mean, if they, they, 
listen, they need a buyer's agent that's good to help them sort through the complicated mess. And so if a buyer's agent is not incentivized to sell your home, that can be a problem. But in most cases in a market with the data that I just showed you, that's not an issue right now. I will adapt to the market as the market changes. That's why you hire a good listing agent who understands the value proposition of marketing in the market that we are in. Not the one we had, not the one we're going to have, the one we are in. And analyzing the market and saying, this is what you should do. So my fee for that is 2%. How we present your home to the market, what our model is after that. Totally up to you as the seller. You're in control. That's the thing about the settlement that I think is great. It allows me to make a marketing offer that other real estate agents can't down. They can't say, well, if you're not offering any money to the buyer's agent, you're not going to sell your home. We're not offering any money to the buyer's agent any more effective July anyway. So we're going to have to work through this in a transparent, overt, not covert. It's always been covert. I've never liked it. My consumers that I've worked with, thousands of people have never liked the way this process works. Now, you as a seller are in control. That's what's really changed. The buyer is the one that's going to be presented with more obstacles. But I don't think that this CNN article here about waiting until the, the, the settlement from a board of realtors, which is a trade organization, with a bunch of lawyers and, and some home sellers that are going to get pennies on the dollar here, doesn't have one iota of impact. Whoop, let's go back to the graphs. Let's go back to the graphs. Doesn't have one iota of impact when you have this. Million eighty seven thousand dollars average in Mount Pleasant and the entire market of Charleston and let's really just talk about it for what it is the absorption rate right here two point four months sellers are in control right now and my job as a seller's agent is to empower the seller to be and stay in control because the market allows it and to maximize their equity one of my phrases is I will always work to protect your equity. That's my job. That's the only job of the real estate listing agent. Protect your equity. Anything else is clutter and smoke and mirrors and BS. Your equity and protecting it is the job of the listing and marketing agent. How we do it, how we go about it, how the sausage is made, that's where you have to really get that kind of detail in who can you trust, who can you go with, all of those sort of things. So let's talk about one other part of this which is days on the market. Here's a graph I want to show you from a concept of marketing. As you go about, should I do it for 2%? Should I pay my agent 2 and offer 3%? Just go ahead and pay the buyer's fee. Does the market allow it? Is that going to harm me? Am I going to just put that to the bottom line? You know, All of these different things that I help people sort through and unpack based on their very hyper-focused micro market like there's there's mount pleasant and then there's dunes west and then there's a section of dunes west the hoa right there's an hoa within the hoa so what's the micro market there's there's nexton and then there's all these neighborhoods in somerville in nexton community within nexton what's the micro market within nexton and what are the uniquenesses of the market how do we sort that out and then what offering do we make how do we present this every every single listing of a home is like a retail display at a Nordstrom or a Belk or a Macy's it's it's got to be presented to attract the consumer or consumers that are likely to want to live in that community within that subsection of that community in that house who is it then we go find them and, you know, here's the beauty of it. 20 years ago, this stuff was hard. Ads in the newspaper, print ads galore, expensive, expensive print marketing, like a shotgun approach. If I shoot enough shells in the air, I'm, I'm going to hit the bird, right? Uh, but in this particular case, it's a rifle approach with Facebook targeting and Google targeting and all of these things. It's so much easier to go, this is who's going to buy the house. These are the... These are the, the, the income demographics. These are what's happening in the market. We're going to target the marketing there. I mean, you can't get super focused and you can't discriminate. I mean, I, you know, but you, you can do a blanket marketing to the, the, the income dynamics of people who will buy a house that's 500 grand in Somerville or a house that's 1.5 million in Mount Pleasant. Um, so that's the case. But here's what happens if you don't get it right between day one and day 60. You lose $19,000 on the average $400,000 home 
if it's on the market 60 days after you listed it. So you got to get it right in the first 14 days, right there. You're getting a little sweaty at 14 days, right? You want to get it sold in the first week, really, with multiple offers. That's where I protect your equity the most. So this is a very important graph to keep in mind as a seller's agent because when you are listing your home with an agent and you're interviewing people and here's what you get, I'm the best agent. I am number one in this. I have done this. I have done that. My team will this. My team has this widget. My team does that. that the sausage to you as a seller doesn't matter. What matters is which agent understands the market, micro market you're in, the city, the subdivision, and the subsection of the subdivision, who understands what's happening, who's buying those houses, and how do we reach them organically through social media targeting, Google pay-per-click marketing, so that those buyers see your house unrelated to some other buyer's agent or real estate agent. Remember, the reason that we I am not scared about the NAR settlement, buyer's agents no longer have hardly any impact on whether a buyer sees a house or not. Almost none. The best of the best do. I mean, I'm given a 5% of buyer's agents are worth their weight in gold and then a ton more, okay? The other 95% of people that work with buyers aren't worth anything. They're in the way of the transaction. They have keys to doors to open them and show them. And beyond that, they're useless. That's, I'm not being mean. That's just the truth. They're not educated, not trained, because if you can't sell, meaning list houses and really do good marketing, sell value and sell houses and reach targeted markets to target the most equity for your home seller, you become a buyer's agent. Like, nothing wrong with being a buyer's agent, but buyer's agency is, is an emotional process. Seller's agency is stats and data and data technology and IT and marketing, and it's, a, it's, a, it's like an artist. It's a creative approach. You get it right, you get 100%. You get it wrong, you lose 19 grand over 60 days. On the average house, you're talking a million-dollar house, you might be losing 40 grand. This is how important it is for you as, as a seller to make sure that you go to the right listing agent. Of course, self-servingly, I think that would be me in the Charleston Tri-County market down to Buford uh, up to Pauley's Island. But uh, there are good, plenty of good agents. Uh, but it's not the, your sister's cousin's mother's daughter that you go to church with that just got her license because they're going to cost you that nineteen grand and then some due to ineptitude and inexperience. That's the show for this week. We'll have updates throughout the week. Uh, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube so you get notified. Click the notification bell so when a vi new video comes out, you'll get an update on the market. And follow me on the Facebook page, the Brian, Crab uh, Brian Crabtree Real Estate, and uh, we'll put updates there and useful information. HouseDog.com and my cell phone number is 843-343-4141. Have a great week and go forth and prosper.